What can we learn from the past that affects today's climate? Hello, friends. Jim here. Historic iceberg surges offer insights on modern climate change. So here we have this graphic here. This is supposed to show, uh, you know, the AMOX system. This right here is the North Atlantic Gyra. And we have the North Atlantic Drift heading up into the Greenland, Icelandic, Norwegian Sea to Gin Sea, where deep water formation takes place. And this is the return current that goes southbound. And what we see here is this little thinner red arrow is the return from you know, the waters of the Pacific and Indian Ocean, primarily the Pacific, returning to refuel the uh, Gulf Stream and the North Atlantic Gyra. The uh, wider arrows indicate a slower flow rate. As you can see, it's from basically the last ice age that we can see the uh, extensive uh, ice sheets indicated over uh, Scandinavia, uh, UK, and uh, Northern Europe, and of course, most of North America. So, what's going on? Well, in the past, we've had, we have the evidence indicating a great many icebergs flowing into the North Atlantic, breaking off from land and flowing into the uh, North Atlantic, and this impacted AMOC. This typically occurred during what's called the Heinrich event. And the Heinrich event is characterized by a period of rapid iceberg discharge from the Laurentide ice sheet during the last glacial maximum. These episodes greatly weaken the system of ocean currents that circulates water within the Atlantic Ocean. And of course, AMOC brings warm surface water north, cold deep water south. This oceanic conveyor belt, a term coined by Wally Broker, is a major component of the global climate system, influencing marine ecosystem weather patterns and temperatures. It is also regarded as a potential tipping element of the Earth's climate, meaning that a tiny perturbation could push the system to a point of no return. So, uh, Yuzhen Zhao, who is a postdoc researcher at UC Santa Barbara's Department of Earth and Science, said that's why a lot of people are worried about a potential collapse of AMOC. A weakened AMOC would have a global impact, dropping temperatures in the Northern Hemisphere, raising them in the South. We'd see dramatic cooling in Western Europe and Eastern North America, the UK, Scandinavian regions as well, Northern Europe as well, and changes in the tropical rain belt that impact the Amazon and Central Africa. Uh, part of that would also be a, a shift in the location of the uh, Interconvergence Tropical Zone, the ICTZ, that's found in the Pacific. Zhao compared the rate of iceberg coming from the Greenland ice sheet to ice flux during Heinrich events, the last time AMOC collapsed. He found that as Greenland's ice sheet retreats inland, its iceberg calving will likely not persist long enough to completely derail the Atlantic circulation. That said, Increased freshwater runoff and continued global warming remain threats to the circulation stability. The increased freshwater runoff is due to the warmer air temperatures melting the ice. The North Atlantic is the, the linchpin of, the, of AMOC. This is where surface water uh, cools off, becomes dense, and sinks to deep layers. That drives the marine conveyor belt, which is part of the global current system. Adding fresh water to the North Atlantic can disrupt this process because you decrease the salinity, making, it, making the surface waters less dense, 
So even though it may be cold, it's considerably less salty, so it's not dense enough to sink. Whereas without the freshwater influx, it's cold and salty, and it sinks. So there are a number of ways that scientists can ascertain how AMOC will behave in the future, uh, including uh, direct modern observations, statistical analyses, computational models, okay? But the ocean's a big place, makes it hard. So Zhao went back to, uh, and looked over the historical data. And the most recent period when AMOC was severely weakened, which was from 68,000 to 16,000 years ago, during the last glacial period. During cooler periods, there is more water locked up in ice sheets, creating a reservoir for quickly flushing the ocean with fresh water in the form of icebergs or runoff. And that's, those episodes are what known as the Heinrich events. Today does not exist, but it used to cover northern North America and was kilometers thick in New York City. Comparing these Heinrich events to current melting in Greenland enables Zal to predict how current trends might change AMOC in the future. Icebergs bring larger sediment out to sea than water or wind, a signature that geologist Hartmut Heinrich noticed in seafloor cores in the North Atlantic. Now you can see why they're called Heinrich events. To estimate how much ice each Heinrich event released, Eugen analyzed the amount of thorium-230 found in these sediments. Now, thorium-230 is the latest in isotopic uh, fractionation analyses that is performed. It's a recent uh, de development and it has certain advantages over uranium because it doesn't dissolve well in water. That is, thorium does not dissolve well. Now, thorium it results from the decay of naturally occurring uranium in seawater. So because it doesn't dissolve well in, in water, thorium then precipitates on particles in a water column. Because thorium-230 is produced at a steady rate, more sediment flux dilutes its concentration. So basically, if you see a decrease in the thorium levels, that tells you that the sediment flux was higher, and vice versa. Okay, this is right here. Less thorium means more sediment being deposited down to ocean floor, carried by the icebergs. So uh, Zhao was the first to take the, the melting rate of icebergs during the Heinrich events to current trends looking at the thorium-230 uh, data. And he discovered that Greenland's predicted ice outflow is on par with a mid-range Heinrich event. So what are the effects of a mid-range Heinrich event? Well, it, it's not going to be that great. During Heinrich, uh, Heinrich events, the AMOC was already moderately weakened before all the icebergs uh, showed up, you know, got released. In contrast, the circulation today is rigorous. Or I should say, excuse me, vigorous. Now, this higher uh, vigorous state is actually good news because it means that AMOC should persist a little further. Heinrich events also lasted tens of hundreds of years. In contrast, the Industrial Revolution only began around the late 18th century, carbon emissions ramping up much later. So he's saying, maybe we haven't screwed things up badly enough. Well, I think we've already screwed things up badly enough. There's another little, uh, little twist to this. Not all melting has the same effect on Atlantic circulation. Freshwater released as iceberg has a much larger impact on AMOC than runoff, which is released at the melting on land. That's because the icebergs via currents can be brought to uh, further latitudes further south. Now, they transported 
further south where they do melt the water so they can cool the surrounding seawater, but they can cause the surface salinity to decrease over a much greater area. So icebergs can cool the surrounding seawater. It may be able to freeze it into sea ice. And then this ice layer acts as a blanket, keeping the ocean surface warm and preventing from it to sink, from sinking. What's more, icebergs travel much farther out to sea than runoff, delivering fresh water to the regions where this deep water formation occurs and go further south, as I just said. So scientists at IPCC uh, pr uh, project that AMOC will weaken moderately over the 21st century, trends similar to the effects of a Heinrich event. However, Greenland's ice discharge is projected to, to dwindle because the ice is melting. So its glaciers then recede a little further inland, so it is less, they melt on land, and they release freshwater runoff, than whole icebergs chunking off and, and getting into the ocean. So uh, Zhao can, hopes to uh, look at other factors that could cause uh, Heinrich events in the future. Some research suggests that each episode was preceded by ice discharge in the Pacific Ocean from the smaller uh, Cordilleran ice sheet. Although this ice sheet hasn't left any remnants, Zhao thinks studying the Siku events as the latter are known could provide insight. He's also interested in sediments around Antarctica. Remember, Deep water, there is deep water formation off Antarctica as well. While Greenland's location causes it to dominate AMOC, the southern ice sheet is much larger, meaning it could have a greater influence on global sea level and salinity. And also, as AMOC slows, so you have a reduction in the North Atlantic deep water formation and volume and flow, you have Antarctic bottom water that reaches further northward. It reaches far into the North Atlantic because you have a thing called the uh, conservation of volume. You've got to fill in the ocean with something. So, very interesting uh, you know, looking at the, the thorium. Now, in the past, when AMOC has slowed or shut down, that has been sufficient to cause the advance of ice sheets and typically that would bring cooler conditions uh, for the planet especially the the hemisphere the northern hemisphere today because of all the ocean heat content that is found in the oceans in excess of 465 zettajoules concentrated in the upper five to 700 meters while it is, it is correct to project that Eastern North America, Scandinavia, UK, Northern Western Europe will feel cooler, uh, will experience uh, cooler conditions, I don't think the rest of the planet will. I do not think there will necessarily be a Northern Hemispheric cooling because that ocean heat is going to be diffusing to the atmosphere. It advects horizontally to melt ice, uh, cantilevered land ice, and so forth. What the concern that I have, and I have shared this with you, is that when the North Atlantic deep water forms, right, it sinks and forms and goes flows southward through the motion of water, a little bit of friction parted from engaging with other water masses. Friction imparts a little bit of heat. Starts to warm up the water. Warms up the water. A little bit of expansion. The density decreases. It starts to rise. And as it upwells, it's bringing nutrients with it. Where does it upwell? The Antarctic Divergence Zone. It is no surprise 
that the Antarctic Divergence Zone, part of the Southern Ocean, is the, the most productive open ocean area on the planet. That upwelling fuels the entire food web, food ecosystem there. The phytoplankton get their nutrients, they do their thing, you get the zooplankton feeding on the phytoplankton, and then you get the krills, and you get the baleen whales, the orcas, the seal, the penguins, the fish, etc. If AMOX slows, North Atlantic deep water formation slows or stops, that upwelling does not take place. That food system collapses. So that's the concern that I have. But due to all that ocean heat content, you're going to have regional cooling, not necessarily hemispheric cooling. That's my assessment. So, interesting. Yeah, thorium-230 is, you know, is a recent uh, isotopic fractionation technique that's used. Another legacy of Wally Broker's work. So there you have it. Until next time.